Hello, today I'm going to show you how I built this laser engraver, which is using a very uncommon mechanism for guiding the laser beam. But before going into detail, let's see how this thing works. So I'll just put on my laser goggles here. I will connect to the machine. I've got the G-code file loaded up. And let's go. This machine will engrave the picture, as you can see, by using, well, the 545 nanometer laser. All right, let's not wait uh, for this and just get right into the details. Okay, so we'll just start with a general overview of the machine. As you can see, we've got some colored acrylic here, which actually uh, keeps the 545 nanometer beam from exiting in the machine, but because we've got some clearances in here, um, it's a good idea to wear safety goggles nonetheless. So as you can see, I can open the lid here. We've got a little switch here so that the machine knows that the lid is closed. Otherwise, it won't power up the laser. We've got the material in here, which I started engraving. And maybe you can see that we've got some, got a little fan in here. I'll just, um, redirect the light a bit so you can see that. Yeah, that's that's better. As you can see, we've got a little fan here which extracts the fumes. And this fan is actually uh, very necessary because the smoke produced by the laser beam actually um, absorbs a lot of the uh, beam so that a lot of the laser power actually doesn't make it through the uh, to the wood. So it's very necessary to extract the fumes. Also, the optics in, in this laser head would get very dirty very quick without this fan. All right, as you can see, I've got a little magnetic um, thing here which keeps it closed. And now it's uh, pretty tight. All right, as you can see, nothing more. We've got all switch here, all um, outlet. I've got it switched off because I'm not wearing safety goggles. And we've got the USB plug. All right, let's open this up and see what's in this um, interesting laser head here. All right, here we are. Now I'll just go over the modules very quick and then we'll go into the detail with these different modules. Now, as you can see, I've built this machine to be very compact so that every little um, piece actually fits into this uh, general enclosure. As you can see, we've got the uh, power supply here. This is just a normal uh, switch mode power supply, which converts the 200, 220 volts AC into 12 volts DC for the whole machine. Now next is this module here. This is basically the brain of the machine. We've got the microcontroller in here, and we've got uh, some other uh, bits and pieces that make this whole thing work. This thing uh, talks to the computer and to the other devices in this uh, machine to make it work, you know, as intended. Then we've got the optical module here, which turns mirrors. And these mirrors deflect the laser beam in a very precise way and, well, makes the beam uh, wander around the material and engrave it, basically. Now, next, we've got the laser itself. This is, you know, you can't really see it in this perspective, can you? Yeah. This is a uh, 445 nanometer 5 watt laser module. It's a diode laser, basically. Um, and this is a very high power laser. So 5 watts of optical output is ridiculously high, which is why uh, you need laser goggles, because this definitely will blind you. And then we've got some other optics right here some prisms and a lens, which I'll go over into detail in a minute. Okay, so here we've got the optics. Now, as you can see, we've got a collimator lens in here. This just um, reduces the divergence of the laser beam. Now, we need all these optics because um, diode laser actually have very, very bad beam quality. 
they don't actually put out a normal round beam, like for example in helium neon laser wood, but much rather a bar like this. Now to um, get rid of this bar shape, we have this pair of anamorphic prisms, which widens this short setup to make this a normal square. And then we've got this lens, which, you know, focuses this um, square into a very, very small square. And we've got this um, basically mirror prism, which mirrors it into the optics of this um, optical module. Now, don't worry, if you want to uh, know more about this optical module here, which basically uh, is just designed to um, focus this beam on a very, very um, large focal distance, because, you know, the laser beam is created in here, and we need it all the way down here in the material, which dead laser, which dead lasers actually are not made for, usually. Uh, so, you know, we need all these optics. And I actually made a whole video about these optics, so I'll just, um, you know, put it into the description, and if you want to, you can click on it and see in detail what this uh, thing does. So next we've got the optical module, and I've zoomed in here quite a bit so you can see what's going on. Now we talked about the laser beam um, getting bounced off this mirror prism here, and the first thing it hits is this mirror. This mirror can rotate, as you can see, and you now it has this little pin on the end um, for this optical end stop, so the machine before actually starting will just move this mirror into the uh, end stop so that, that it knows where it is. And the same with the second mirror. So the beam hits um, this mirror and then hits the second mirror. And this second mirror, well, it's also turned by the stepper motor, of course, and also has a um, end stop. Now the two angles of the uh, mirrors correspond to a very unique point in the XY target plane, which is, well, the material. Um, so using this, you can actually deflect the laser beam very, very quickly because we have very low um, moments of inertia, you know. We've just got these two mirrors and, well, nothing else to turn, basically. So you could drive this very, very fast, which is what I did in the prototype of this build. Now, because other than, um, you know, jog commands, you don't really need this high speed because the laser beam needs a little bit of time to heat the material up and burn it. So um, using insane speeds really is not something we need here. Other than, of course, in uh, jog commands where it just needs to position the beam without actually you know, engraving. Now this is the optical module from a different angle. We just looked at it from this angle. Um, as you can see, we've got the two stepper motors in here and they go to this box, which we are going to look at next. Okay, here's the box, and as you can see, we've got the microcontroller here. This is a Teensy 4.0, and the only reason because I chose the Teensy is because it is really insanely fast. It has a clock speed of, I think, 600 megahertz, you know, to, in comparison, a normal Arduino Uno has about 16 megahertz. So that's a performance boost of over 30. That's ridiculous. So I just chose this. It's a bit annoying to use because it has 3.3 volt logic levels and not 5 volts. But, you know, whatever. And as you can see, we've got the USB connection here. I'll just um, move the camera just a slightly bit. Yeah, we've got the USB jack in here. And this is connected to the outside to the computer basically. And the thing I just um, removed was the fan to cool the whole thing down. Because uh, the TNC really doesn't like heat and this thing really uh, does produce a lot of heat. Now this thing is a linear voltage regulator. This um, regulates the 12 volt input, input voltage to 5 volts for the TNC. And we need both voltages because we've got the stepper motor drivers right here, got the X and the Y axis. These are two silent step stick um, TMC2209, I think. And they are really 
great because um, they deliver really nice, quiet stepping movements. And uh, these need 12 volts for the uh, stepper motors. Yeah, and I mean, that's basically it. We've got some inputs for the um, optical end stops. We've got the input for the laser. And this is for the um, fan. And that's basically it. We've got this little switch here, which is um, the um, end stop for the door. So when the end stop is off, or the door is open, we can't actually apply power to the laser, so it's switched off. Yeah, that's basically it. So the whole magic basically is in this little teensy. And now I'm just going to assemble all the parts together, and we're going to look at the software which I custom wrote for this whole system. So this is the firmware that I've uploaded onto the TNZ microcontroller. And as you can see, we've got some firmware settings, um, some definitions for the pins, for the step and direction pins, and the end switches, and so on. Um, yeah, I've written some coins here so you can adjust this to your liking if you want to build this machine yourself. I won't go over this code in detail, or not at all probably, because code explanation is probably one of the most boring things that you can uh, watch. So let's get right into the GUI. All right, here we are in the uh, GUI. And I've written this in Java, custom for this application. And as you can see, we've got the machine status window in here. Um, I can connect to this machine um, via COM port 3. And I've got some other buttons here. And this actually needs G code. I can send G code directly to the machine when I'm connected. But, you know, that's very tedious. So you can actually import uh, a custom G, G code file into this uh, GUI. And the way to create this G code is to start the G code creator in here, which I also custom wrote. And then you can uh, choose a file. I've got some example file well, not in here in here in the github um, page and as you can see this is just a small jpeg and you can adjust the x length of the engraving so this is the basically the size of the engraving and the y length is determined via the aspect ratio of the picture we've got the feed rate the jog rate and the laser spot size and then you can give this a name. I get this, I'll just call this example. And you can choose a directory. I'll just put it in the same folder where I put where I got the JPEG from. In here. And then you can create the G code. Export done. Nice. Okay, so I think we are now ready to. Uh, connect to the machine. I'll just um, load up the file that we just created and we'll connect. As you can see we're connected and as you can see we've got the start job button here. Oh, I'll have to update this. Of course the gcode file is selected right now. And when we start the job the machine will first home and then it will work until it's done. Another quick thing, uh, I've got the GitHub um, pulled up here. As you can see, you can download all the codes and example files and other stuff from this GitHub page. And I've also set up, set up a little wiki in here, which explains how the different G-code commands that the um, firmware supports work. So just a little bit of documentation there if you 
actually want to recreate uh, this machine. As you can see, we've got some updates in here. And this is the previous prototype uh, on which the general uh, mirror rotating mechanism actually is based on. And I've made a, a video on this, uh, so you can go watch that if you want to. All right, that's basically it. Um, I've got some pieces here that I've engraved and um, tried to optimize the parameters for the different kinds of wood. Now, with usual, uh, just as with usual um, laser engraving, the whole game basically is trying to get the parameters, you know, just perfect for the material. As you can see, this actually worked pretty well, and. Yeah, this is the thing that I've uh, shown in the videos. Now the whole thing is not without its flaws. Um, sometimes it just stops working out of nowhere. I'm not sure why. I think the um, USB cable or the connection might be bad. I'm not not perfectly sure. But as you can see, it, it generally works. And um, it's a proof of concept, basically. Now some people might ask themselves, why? Why would you need need this kind of kinematic? And the real answer is, you really don't. Um, a normal XY plotter is probably faster than this. Um, but of course, this design is pretty compact. Now, the only reason why a normal XY plotter you can get on Amazon or eBay for like 100 bucks um, is faster is because the um, difficult optics in here makes it really hard to s focus the laser spot onto a very, very small well, spot. So the uh, light intensity is pretty low, you know, compared to a normal laser engraver, which means that we can't go as, fa as fast as we um, could theoretically with this machine. If I was able to actually focus this beam down to normal um, beam diameters, this thing would be really, really fast. But um, currently I'm not able to do that, so that's why a normal XY plotter would probably be faster than this. But anyway, it's a great project to, to learn about optics and electronics, you know, to tinker a little bit, um, maybe solder a bit, uh, program and so on. And it's really been a good experience for me. So, yeah. All right, that's basically it. Thank you for watching and I'd be very happy to welcome you as a new subscriber to this channel if you're interested in this kind of uh, laser and electronics stuff. Of course you can if you like this video, give this video a thumbs up and maybe write a comment, I'll read it. Thank you for watching and 